Hello and welcome to a new episode of the Oh My Curry Goodness podcast. I'm your host, Hamza Islam. My guest this week is Khalid Dada, who is the president of the Muslim Student Association at The Ohio State University. Now, Ohio State has one of the largest Muslim student associations in the country. So there's no doubt a huge responsibility on Khalid to make sure to provide the best experience possible for as many Muslims on campus. I also want to add that we are recording this just a few days before the month of Ramadan. And this episode will come out, I think, either the first or second day. I'm not 100% sure. But nevertheless, I'm very excited for this episode. So I hope you guys enjoy our conversation about what it means to be a Muslim, what his journey to being president of Muslim Student Association looked like, and what he hopes to do in the future. He's someone who's very involved in um, community building, He's involved in advocacy for Muslims. It's great to see people like Khalid who want to try to be the best Muslim possible. So here's my conversation with Khalid Dada. Hope you guys enjoy it. Khalid Dada, welcome to the Oh My Curry Goodness podcast. Thank you so much for having me. It's so great to see you here. And before we start... I do want to talk about um, the fact that the month of Ramadan is happening just a few days as of this recording. It's always a special time of the year, but it can also be a challenge, especially for college students, because we are balancing schoolwork and fasting. I want to know for you, from you personally, how these last few days have been for you. It must, I mean, are you more excited, nervous, or is it more of a combination of both? Um, Yeah, no, it's great that you brought that up. Um, I actually just last night got back from my spring break trip. Um, so I was doing like a road trip around the West Coast. I was in San Fran, LA, Las Vegas, Lake Tahoe. Um, and I just got back last night. I was gone for almost a whole week. Um, but I can tell you that I definitely didn't get to like fully be on break because um, Ramadan is coming up. Um, And like with MSA um, and other things that I'm a part of, like all focuses on Ramadan and like planning for Ramadan. Um, We like OSU host different events and hold prayers. And um, so it's been a lot of planning up to that. So like definitely on that end of like hosting people and um providing that community aspect on the college campus has definitely been a lot of work. Um, I wouldn't say anything nervous because it's something that we've done before. Um, so looking forward to it, but then on a personal level, I'm definitely really excited. It's a month that um, we are able to like reflect, um, get closer to God. And it's just a beautiful time like where the whole community is on the same level um everyone's either balancing work or school with fasting and then like extra late nights um so it's just it's a really beautiful time so I'm honestly looking like very forward to it um but then also there's going to be a lot of work that comes with it in the different roles that I'm in no and I totally agree I think one of the most special things about the month of Ramadan is being closer to your faith being closer to your community And I know that's something we always try to do on a daily basis, but there's something special about that month in particular where you're able to just focus on you and how to become a better version of you or a better Muslim, um, whether it's to yourself or to other people. So it's always a special month and I wish you the best. Let's hope, uh, let's hope everything goes well, but I want to talk about your role because you are the president of the Muslim student association at Ohio state it is one of the largest Muslim student associations in the country, uh, just for context. But before we talk more about that, I would love to know for uh, from your for you personally what being a Muslim means to you, because especially when it comes to religion, we always have this notion of uh, we have to try to be the best. We have to be the best person possible. But I often feel like with that um, mindset, there are it's so much like what does that mean? It's such a broad term and even if that is what like even Muslims believe in, maybe we don't always apply that. So for you, what, what do you think, what does being a Muslim mean to you personally? 
Um, yeah, no. And uh, I appreciate bringing that up. And I think it's always, uh, when I talk about this role or like what I do, I always think it's important to highlight um, that we are one of the largest chapters in the nation. Um, being at Ohio State, most of the things that you do, you are like one of the largest just because of the campus climate and how large of a campus we are. Um, and I think that that's shaped me into being who I am today. Being Muslim is number one to me always. Um, it has been, and I hope it always stays this way. Um, it's been an exemplary guide for how or who I want to be. I think uh, in Islam, there's so many different um there's so many different guides or like how to act as a as a person in today's society. Um, and it's been a, a really vital factor into shaping who I am today. And then even when you go on to leading an organization, um, especially one as important as MSA, where you're basically tasked with trying to help Muslims continue to identify as themselves and not stray away um, as Muslims when they're on campus. Um, so it's it's been uh, an up and down journey for sure, um, as it is for anyone who's practicing religion. Um, it's very difficult to be the perfect person when you're identifying with the religion because there's just so many aspects to it. Um, but I think in terms of leading the organization and being Muslim, um, it's helped me stay grounded, uh, stay humbled, and be able to lead as best as possible. I know I appreciate you saying that because I used to think for a long time, you're supposed to know that answer. Like, What does being a Muslim mean to you? And it's still a question I still ask myself not in a bad way, but it's more like, okay, like, how do I know, like, what does being a Muslim mean to me? How do I become the best version? And there are always people, and it's not just Islam. I know there are different religions where it's like, you need to know the answer. And if you don't know that, then that means you're not staying true to yourself. So the fact that especially coming from you and given the role that you have as being president for you to say, I don't know the answer because it's always an up and down journey. Um, it lets me, people like me know that, okay, it's okay to not figure that answer out now because it's it's always going to be a journey and a process. But you have been involved in um, giving back to the Muslim community, not just in college, but it's been a part of you your whole life. That has been something you've been doing since you were a kid. I would love to know what what was it or how you first started getting into this idea of giving back to the Muslim community and what has allowed, what what is the one thing that's really allows you to keep doing it? Because it's so easy, especially when people do things when they're a kid, it's very easy to give up something, but you've stayed, um, you stayed the course. You've never really changed your mindset or you're thinking of, I want to do something different. This has always been something you've wanted to do. So what, how did you first get involved and what have you, what has allowed you to still continue that even today? Um, yeah, that's a great question. Um, it is true, I have been working a lot with through volunteering or serving organizations, serving on boards um, through the local Muslim community uh, and even like throughout the nation even. Um, it started off really young. Um, I can't particularly go back to a time where I was like, oh, this is the first thing I did. But just to give some backstory, I was raised here uh, um, in the community of the North Islamic Cultural Center. Um, and it's a really vibrant community. Um, and especially to other masjids from around Columbus or even around the nation that I've been to, it's particularly diverse um, compared to other masjids I've been to. And it's a really beautiful community uh, especially looking at it from like the outside, honestly, even just aesthetically pleasing. Um, so it's always been a good time to be there. Um, and since a young age, I've 
I feel as if I've always been opened with welcome arms, but I have also seen people or communities not being as welcomed as I was, or even like uh, sometimes I think I was like even pushed to keep going or like there were certain people that saw a special something in me um, that they wanted me to like keep pushing or keep going. Um, and I think that's what's enabled me to start and just keep giving back. Um, I think even to like my parents or my family, sometimes they're like, you're putting in more than like you're receiving. And like, that's a, that's like traditionally like something that people tell me a lot of the times, but I think it's just important to note that like, if it wasn't for that community or those certain individuals that really lifted me up, then I wouldn't be the person that I am today. Uh, I wouldn't know what I would be doing. Uh, I think even leading to becoming a MSA president, this was something that's been in the making for years and years for a lot of people in our community. Um, it was just something that like people shaped me into and to those people I still appreciate to this day. I still work with to this day. Um, but it's just... It's just an important thing for me. It's always about, um, I would always love to give more than I receive. Um, and keeping that expectation, honestly, is is like even good going into like working or like starting my career uh, because it's traditional. Like if you are working under someone, um, more oftentimes than not, you're going to be giving more than you receive. Um, if you are doing what you're expected to be doing. Uh, so I think it's just grounded me and been able to motivate me to keep going. Yeah. And before I want to talk about family, because like how you mentioned when I um, before religion is always first. And I think it's very easy to say that after that is family and then friends and then maybe your, and then your community. And I've, met with you a few times and I've always thought that you, because you're the president of, of MSA uh, or the Muslim Student Association, it is very easy to think that a lot of people, you know, just want to talk to you. A lot of people want to be your friend. And you've told me that there are a few people that have actually, that have helped you in being the person you are today. And I know family is one of that. So I'd love for you to talk about how big family, how much family has meant to you personally. And also, um, another interesting thing, I know your family has put a huge part in Ohio State's Muslim Student Association. And so was that one of the things that led you to M to Muslim Student Association as well? Um, yeah, no, I love my family. Um, so like personally, I am a sibling of four um, and I'm the youngest of the four siblings. I have two sisters and an older brother. Um, and they all have, like, it's all shaped me into who I am today. Like, I'm the last of four to be out of Ohio State. Um, I'm going into my last semester. It's even bittersweet for my parents because, like, they've never, for, like, the last, I don't even know how many years, they've never not had a student out of Ohio State. Um, so it's, it's honestly bittersweet. I, um, truly really enjoy spending time with my family but even as an extension of that um a lot more all of my family from my dad's side actually lives here in dublin ohio like within a one to two mile radius of me um and i'm talking like over a hundred like first and second cousins um and this is like something we're getting together on like a weekly basis. Um, so I'm constantly like surrounded by family. Um, and again, like that's been very crucial into like where I've been. Um, and it was even like a crucial part in like staying in Columbus and like choosing to like stay here and to be around my family because like friends come and go, colleagues come and go, but family is something that's like stayed intact. Um, and there was like an older generation of cousins that all went to OSU. And then there was like 
a one to two year gap where there was like no one at OSU or like we were all like younger. I was part of the younger generation. Um, and a lot of the elders were a part of like MSA and they played parts in the Muslim community at OSU and building it. Um, but then now like we've, a lot of the younger cousins, like every year there's like one or two cousins that are coming into OSU. Um, and I was like part of like the first class of like the new generation to come in. Um, and so then joining MSA, um, I was able to join in my sophomore year and then my junior year was my first run for president. And I believe there was four or five, four of my first cousins who were also on the board. Um, and they were able to like join. I like got them to join. I was like, come on, like, it'll be fun. It'll be a community. Um, and we we're able to join and really leave our mark. And even to this day, it's like this year, like, our MSA elections are going on right now. And I believe there's like five of my first cousins who are running to be on the board. Um, and I think it just, it's been so helpful. And I said this before, but like friends and colleagues and peers and people who you're around community will come and go, but like family has always just stuck. Um, we have like a group chat of people who are always you and like we're always like getting lunch or getting coffee, hanging out. Um, and it just it just feels really good. Honestly, sometimes even in like an education environment, you always feel like there's people competing or, or like people like not always wishing the best for you. But when you're around your family and like, you know, these people like will sacrifice anything for you. Um, it just it feels amazing. And I think, again, it's just a constant theme of like who has grounded me into being who I am today. And I would definitely say like after my religion, definitely family is number two. You no, know, I'm, I'm glad that you have an amazing family. And I do. And like, I, I, I also credit my family for helping me today, especially because in college, it is very easy to, I mean, number one, I think a lot of people have this goal of what do I, what kind of legacy do I want to create? But then it's also the sense of, do I have to give up some of the people in order to be someone different? And especially like, and especially in college, it's like, let's forget, like forget our family so we can spend time with these people. And it's, it's like, it may be good short term, but it will be a negative effect on your long term. And so I always make it a priority to be around people that um, respect their families because it will allow you to respect your families. And then hopefully keep that tradition because it's such an easy thing to forget um especially in college where people are like i know all the answers but you don't really but you given that you have a uh, a pretty big family presence in the muslim student, student association i want to talk to you about your role now you're the third guest i've interviewed from ohio state but i brought in andrew pierce where we talked about what being a student body president means um, not just at Ohio State, but um, around the country. I want to ask you, what does it mean to be, or what is your role as the most uh, president of the Muslim Student Association? Because the easy answer is, well, I represent the interest of Muslim students at Ohio State, particularly Ohio State, let's just say, because we go to Ohio State, but there has to be more than just that. So what is, what, what does a Muslim, or what does president of the Muslim Student Association do? I definitely agree. It is more than that. Um, uh, it's it's honestly such a loaded answer. Um, and I was lucky enough to be in this role for two years. Um, and I, I'm, I'm very happy to be passing it on in a place that I've been able to lay a foundation work for what's to come. I think coming into being the MSA president, it was the main goal for me was that when I'm gone, someone is able to come in and pick up the work. When you're talking about student organizations compared to just like a typical nonprofit organization, student organizations leadership is changing year after year after year. There's traditionally never a consistency of 
having a president for two years or even more than that. Um, it's always consistently like changing um, and being able to lay a foundation work for someone to just come in, pick up where you left off and go um, was crucial. Um, there's so many different aspects to be covered. You're covering the religious aspect of being able to provide students a way to stay connected to their religion um, while they're on campus. And, and traditionally, like we're on a, for Muslims, it's like a 50-50 basis of students who are from the local community, but then also students who commute or local local students and then also students who are not from here and who have moved to Ohio State. Um, and so being able to provide a community to those who are away from home um, is another crucial part. There's also a big aspect and like something that wasn't really present before I came into this role, but like something I to push and I hope that it continues is an advocacy effort. Um, meaning making sure that Muslims are accommodated for, accounted for, uh, Muslim students have a seat at the big table, Muslim students are respected and kind of transitioning the question of like, just knowing that like last year, there was a big push for Ramadan on campus. We were doing a lot of work to try to be able to get the campus uh, to understand what Ramadan is, what they can do to support students, how they can support students. To this year, me not needing to reach out to administrators, faculty, professors, but rather them reaching out to me or just MSA generally um, on, can I send students this email? Or like, how do I respond to this? Like whatever it was, it was coming to us rather than us doing the seeking, which makes a job a lot easier in standards of like how Muslims are respected or accounted for. Um, there is a, a group of like some of the largest student organizations that come together like once a semester, I believe, um, and uh MSA was never a part of this discussion. And even this year, we were able to go sit at that table. We were able to sit with USG or Ohio Staters or Buckeye Fund, OUAB. So we were able to join the discussion of some of those larger organizations at OSU to talk about things that are happening. And I, I forget who it was. I honestly believe it was Andrew Pierce um, pointed something out to me that at the table, I was the only person who has stayed in their role for a second year. So being able to transition that communication and who you're talking to was very easy in that case. Um, so I think there's just like, there's so many different layers to it. Um, but my hope is that any of the foundation blocks that I laid are able the next leaders next year, but then also 10 years from now are able to just pick up and continue to go. Uh, because there's a lot of places where we laid foundation blocks. Um, and my hope and goal is that um, 10, 15 years down the line, I'm able to look back and say, oh, like that conversation I started is actually now being implemented. Um, and that is um, what I'm hoping for. Now, I want to talk about intentions because you are representing most, if not all, the Muslims at Ohio State. And everyone is coming from different backgrounds. And it's so easy to, I guess, fall into this realm of people pleasing because you have to try to provide the best experience for everyone. But unfortunately, no matter how hard you try, there's always going to be one or at least one person that's going to feel unsatisfied. And so it's like, okay, let me try to impress this group. But then there's another group that's like, oh, I don't like what you're doing. So then you have to try that. And then you're leaving another one. So there's always a sense of like, no matter how hard you try, not everyone is going to appreciate you, even though you are showing good intentions. And that's unfortunately what's very hard in the world or in, in our communities where we don't understand that a person is trying to do good, but not everyone is going to be receptive to that. 
So as a president, how hard is it to provide the best experience for everyone, given that you're dealing with so many different backgrounds and also sometimes uh, different, I guess, ideologies when it comes to Islam or Muslims in general? Um, yeah, no, I think um, when I first came into the role, it was like uh, I did really just want to please everyone as best as I could. Um, I think in the past two years, as a leader, I myself have grown exponentially. Um, and I think one of the most important parts is to learn that you cannot please everyone. Um, and being able to be the best leader that you can be means that you're not going to be able to satisfy everyone. It means that you're going to have to make decisions based on what you know and that you're doing it with the best intentions and not looking for what the public viewpoint is. There's going to be times where you're receiving backlash. Um, there's been many times through the past two years that we have focused on things that have a lot of backlash or have a lot of conflict but those are things that are important to us and those are things that are important to the MSA and representing Muslims doesn't representing MSA doesn't mean you're just representing Muslims at Ohio State um, but you're representing Muslims all over the world um, and there was many times where the community elders, leaders of other organizations would were coming to MSA to say, hey, like, this is your realm, like, you take care of this. I even um, through the Turkey and Syria earthquake, that was a major catastrophe. It was really heartbreaking to see what was happening there. There's no organization around the world that covers Turkey and Syria. Um, it's just never really been a thing. Um, so even in the community, there was divide on who should host what or what fundraiser are we doing or like who are we supporting? Like there was just always that divide, but then the community seeked out MSA, the Turkish and Syrian community, they seeked out MSA and they said, hey, you be the uh, in-between kind of connection um, and you go out and we hosted a vigil, we were hosting uh, fundraisers, uh, we still are to this day hosting fundraisers and helping both communities. Um, but just, we're able to really connect the community because we don't focus on a particular sect of Islam or a particular background, or we don't support just the Arab community or the Desi community or uh, the African Muslim community, we so we represent everyone and we do our best to support all and we are constantly doing our best to support all and always doing research and uh, finding out more to be able to um, represent well. But again, like you said, it's about your best intention. You're never going to be able to please everyone um, and just understanding and knowing that the work you're doing is good is just what's able to uh, keep me, keep us, keep me grounded um, and able to continue the work through any backlash that we may face. Now, I want to kind of bring back your background because you are someone who has always been about giving back to the Muslim community. And as a pre as the president of MSA, you are looking ways to provide a best the best experience for Muslims and you are not afraid to be advocating for people that have been affected one way or another around the world so whether it be the Turkey and or what's happening in Turkey uh what's happening in Syria or other parts where of the Middle East that's being affected and you're saying hey we need to spread we need to raise awareness to this issue and we need the support of Ohio State to be able to say hey this is right or this is wrong because ultimately people in the Middle East or Muslims in particular are being affected. Now, being an advocate, while you, there are good things about being an advocate and you're not afraid to speak up about certain issues, not everyone 
will accept it's kind of like what we talked about like backlash where not everyone will see what you're looking for or oftentimes it's like we need to advocate for these group of people and unfortunately people just go nope it's not that we don't want to but we can't or whatever reason so i hate to use the word activist because i don't know if you like that title given how given that there can be a positive connotation and a negative connotation but when you're speaking on behalf of certain people who are being affected and things don't go your way how do you continue to keep advocating for Muslims or especially given that there are things happening around the world, but unfortunately, sometimes people just don't understand how bad of a situation it is affecting those groups of people. Um, yeah, and this is um, like a common question that I always get. And my number one go-to answer um has always been staying silent is also being, or staying silent is siding with the oppressor. Um, and being in a role where you're leading an organization, if you're, again, if you're staying silent, that means your organization is also siding with the oppressor. The community representing in this case, Ohio State is also siding with the oppressor. I um, mean, then even generally just Muslims you're just a representative of the Muslim body. You are also siding with the oppressor. Um, I think what happened in Turkey and Syria was not was not much of, there was not really pushback. I mean, it was a natural disaster um, and we were able to, like, to peacefully um, host events and have fundraisers. Um, but I think generally there's like, one topic that traditionally always comes up that has brought us backlash, and that's traditionally dealing with um, what is going on in Palestine. Um, even for MSA, prior to me, um, voicing out for the Palestinian cause was not something that was common in MSA because it was always it always came back with pushback or um, a negative attitude towards MSA. MSA was pushed out of spaces um, if they were to raise concern uh, because the opposition in what's happening in Palestine has such a strong power, especially here in the states um, and specifically at Ohio State that it's just complete, you're just completely silenced when you even utter the word Palestine. Um, but it was, it's something that's been very important to me. I myself am not Palestinian, I'm from Afghanistan, um, but what's happening there is, is, is horrible, but then even more so what's happening here in the States and especially at Ohio State that people are blinded from is even worse to me because that's something that I feel that I need to be on the right side of. Ohio State is heavily funded by those who are causing a lot of oppression in Palestine. Um, and it's been a constant theme from, I believe, 2009 or 10 was the first time that the Students for Justice in Palestine at Ohio State brought a resolution to the undergraduate student government floor asking for Ohio State to look into companies that it is investing in that are oppressing Palestinians. So from 2010 up until 2021, there were six or seven resolutions brought to the USG floor that were almost always unanimously voted no on or had a less than 10% vote for. Um, it was always continuously, the Palestinian voice at Ohio State was continuously being silenced. Um, and there people who were bringing the concerns to the Palestinian cause were being blacklisted or turned away. Um, and through my connections as the MSA president, um, where people were not really turning me away because they wanted to um, 
be with the right side and act as if they're supporting Muslims. And, you know, there's always just like an act sometimes like from Ohio State of like, we want to support everyone, which has been able to help me to get into those crucial discussions. But then I was able to join the Students for Justice in Palestine in their fight um, and joined forces with them, brought MSA, brought the Muslim picture into the Palestinian message. Um, and we were able to successfully pass a resolution through the undergraduate student government in 2022, like last year. Um, it was around this time last year. Um, and it was one of the most beautiful sites I've ever seen on campus. Um, the month leading up to the resolution coming to the floor, it was a very stressful, very tough time. Um, we went from September up until February of staying silent. We were researching, we were writing our resolution, we were talking to people, but every single thing had to stay under wraps. It was a group of three to four students, including myself, that were leading the charge. But again, it was very hard to trust anyone. The second that you are in a conversation where you shouldn't be or you should not trust the person, we were forced to go two steps back um, because the other side always had people or money or whatever it was to be two steps ahead of us, even when we were staying silent. Um, and then finally, we were able to raise our concern. We brought the community together um, because it was just getting hard for us on ourselves. So we just publicized the whole effort, um, what was going on, what we were trying to do. Um, and it was it was just a beautiful when it passed. It was also Ramadan at that time. Um, and we broke our fast all together. We were able to even share a meal with the other side or people who were there supporting the other side. We were able to bring a meal and everyone shared together. I'm telling you, there was like 800 people in the room. If you've ever been in the kind of taught with you, the room was full. Um, and there was a lot of negative, but then eventually we were able to pass the resolution um, that called on Ohio State to look into companies that they're in investing in that are complicit in the human rights violations in Palestine. Um, unfortunately, it passed, um, but there were several measures taken um, to silence our voice still in that case. Um, and Ohio State refused to look into the companies. Um, but from what I know, um, through my work continuously with SJP, they're still fighting very hard uh, to be able to raise their voice and not be silenced. Um, and so it comes with a lot, a lot of backlash. It came with a very tough time sleepless nights, um, fear of being blacklisted, uh, fear of not being able to advance my career after putting my name with something like this. Um, but we were all in all good. Um, if anything, it's made allowed me to grow so much. Um, and I just hope that Ohio State one day understands their complicitness in these human rights violations. Um, and I hope that the Muslim community is continuously able to come together in times of need um, and be able to be there for each other um, when it's most necessary. You've been advocating for Muslims in the past. You're doing that in the present. I would love to know what you want to do in the future. Is this something you continue? Is this something that you want to continue doing? And do you have like a particular goal in mind that you would like to reach? Um, on a goal I would like to reach, I think it's limitless. I'm, I'm someone who has big pictures in mind. Um, and I think definitely like advocacy and 
um, defending human rights uh, is something that I'm very interested in. I am currently a public policy major. I'm graduating this semester. Um, I'm taking a gap year, but plan on attending law school and um, w continuing to work in the field where I'm doing what I believe is the good work and what needs to be done um, to ensure that everyone is has justice and equality um, and is able to proudly pr represent who they are. Um, I don't have a particular, like, this is what I want to do, um, but it's definitely something in the field of defending human rights um, and being the best person that I can while doing it, staying grounded, um, and not just for Muslims, but just, just generally, um, even just like there's so many incarcerated individuals who are being jailed for the wrong reasons or not in that space. So hoping to just practice law and see where my mind goes through law school um, and being able to help those most in need. Before I let you go, I want to talk to you about the fact that you are now entering the last few semester, few months of your undergrad, uh, for uh, your undergrad at Ohio State. I'm sure this must be one of the most exciting times of the year, but also maybe uh, sad, given that you've had so you've you've met so many people and they've you've been allowed to be part of their community and you've accepted them into your community. So for you, have you been allowed to have you? had a chance to kind of reflect on your time at Ohio State as you get ready for life after college? Um, yeah, definitely. It's been bittersweet. Um, there's less than two months to go. I believe we're almost like a month and a half. Um, and it's just, it's a big change as well. Like more than anything, it's just a big change. Um like the schedule and like just being like busy and a lot of the things that I'm currently involved in have to do with being at Ohio State um, or like I'm interning at places or like, and it's all comes kind of to an end with my college career um, or undergraduate at least. Uh, and yeah, like it's just, it's bittersweet. I'm, beyond excited to be done with school <laughs> for the time being at least um even with like msa like i'm actually i'm in a really happy place to be leaving it and passing on i think i've i've put in the work and i've done what i was able to um and it'd be just being able to like pass it on to who's next and teach showing them the ropes and just leaving it up to them um it's it's very bittersweet, but it's also just really exciting. Um, I think I definitely was able to have a really good experience through these last four years. Um, and I'm just excited to see what's next because truly right now, I don't know. <laughs> applying for jobs, applying for schools, but having no idea where I'll go. Um, but I'm just excited to like not really have a worry for a month or two and then <laughs> pick up and get into it yeah no that's that's probably the best answer but i'll tell you what uh you've made a difference in um muslim communities you've done a lot at ohio state and so i applaud you for that and i just want to say thank you so much for joining the podcast thank you for being a great leader and i can't wait to see what's in store for you in the future Thank you so much. And I, I, I've seen you through your podcast journey and I truly hope um, that you're able to succeed here. Uh, and I think you, you have a special talent that you're not able to see and that's connecting, communicating um, with people and getting their stories out. Uh, so I also wish you the best and I really appreciate you for having me. Thank you so much.
Thank you guys so much for listening to this episode. If you like what you saw, feel free to subscribe to this podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. You can also follow us on at or follow us on Instagram at the OMCG Podcast for more information on guests, preview clips, and more. Please continue to support this podcast in however way you are. I really appreciate the support that I've received, and I can't wait to see you guys in the next episode.